Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to today's live recording episode right here on the Always Radiant Skin Podcast, formerly known as the Rachel Parker Podcast. In today's episode, we are discussing cancer prevention strategies and how in doing so will result in slower aging and more radiant skin, as well as allowing our brains and our whole beings to function in the most beautiful, high vibe ways possible. We have an incredible guest here, and I have been following our guest for many, many, many years. We have Dr. Lee Erin Connealy, MD, joining us today. I have her one of her books here, Be Perfectly Healthy. She's an absolute inspiration to myself, and I'm sure many others of you. So let me tell you a little bit about her. Dr. Lee Aaron Connealy, MD, is a prominent leader in the integrative and functional medical field with over 30 years of experience taking the best of all sciences, including homeopathic and conventional treatments for cancer, chronic illness, nutrition, and lifestyle approach. She is the medical director of two unique clinics in Irvine, California, the Center for New Medicine and Cancer Center for Healing. The combined clinics have become the largest integrative medical clinic in North America and are visited by patients worldwide with 65,000 patients and growing. The Center for New Medicine focuses on prevention and internal medicine, early detection of disease and cancer, human optimization, yearly physicals, autoimmune disease, natural hormone replacement, chronic issues, and aesthetics. Dr. Keneally feels we must treat the whole person, the patient with the disease and not the disease of the patient while determining the origin of the illness. Dr. Keneally created the Cancer Center for Healing because of the epidemic spreading of cancer. Patients have scientifically based treatments. Patients receive scientifically based treatments and receive integrative protocols. She has created an acute awareness for the need to focus on cancer prevention providing unique testing to determine the early stages of cancer years before a scan reveals or is recognized. For example, through RGCC genetic testing, she and her skilled team can provide personalized treatment plans for early to late stage cancer patients. She discovered that many factors contribute to the disease process. Therefore, many modalities reverse it and spending the proper time with each patient to allow for the reversal of the disease. Dr. Keneally and her team of practitioners make this happen each day at her multidisciplined state-of-the-art clinic while providing quality life treatments. Dr. Keneally is the author of two books, Be Perfectly Healthy from 2009 and The Cancer Revolution, published in 2017 which has revolutionized the landscape of medicine. In 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022, she was named one of the top 50 functional and integrative doctors in the country. In 2018, Dr. Keneally began a TV series as host of Dr. Tec Detective TV, airing on the JUL TV station network. In addition, she writes for many publications in including Townsend Letter, a prominent medical magazine, along with What Your Doctors Don't Tell You with and for Lyme, Lynn McTaggart, and other publications for Mike Adams, Josh Axe, and Ben Greenfield. She serves on the board for Dr. Josh Axe, ACAM, ACIM, Connect, and Holistic Leadership Council. Also, Dr. Keneally imparts her wisdom in educating medical practitioners from all over the world at her clinic, as well as public speaking engagements, webinars, and podcasts such as this one. It is an absolute honor to have Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally, MD, with us here on the show. How are you today? Great. Thank you for having How me, Rachel. Yes, it's an what? honor to have you here. It's an honor to have oh, you wonderful. here today. I would love yeah, to kick things awesome. off with the billion trillion dollar question. What <laughs> is radiance to you? Oh, that you're a beacon of light and love to yourself and to everyone you meet in the world. Beautifully and very concisely said. And in today's show, we're going to get into the details of how we can become just that. So before we get into that, I would love for you to tell us about your personal 
health journey and some of the things that you have overcome in your life. Well, that's going to be almost the entire show. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I was born in the 50s. And when my mother was pregnant with me, I'm number three of six children. And she started bleeding. And she went to the doctor and the doctor said, oh, we have a medication that we can give you to stop the bleeding. And so you don't lose your baby. So that drug was called DES, diethylstilbestrol. Now they don't use that drug now. So a lot of people might not know about it because they discontinued the drug because of its complications and uh, problems that it caused, especially for offspring. So they found out that the male and female offspring had a higher risk for cancer hormone problems, anatomical problems, infertility problems, and as, you know, as many, many other things, depending on how it affected them the week that the patients, you know, the mother was pregnant. So I started going to MD Anderson Hospital when I was 16 years of age uh, to get checked, uh, getting biopsies and all kinds of investigations. And so at that time, I actually had dysplasia, which is abnormal cells, um, luckily, I was successfully treated. And then um, I never had two periods in a row in my life. And so never. And so I fortunately found the magic of progesterone, which helped balance my cycles. And when I wanted to have children, um, I could not have children the normal way uh, because I never ovulated. So um, in the beginning of that, I had taken you know, medications in fertility drugs uh, which I did on my my alone with a girlfriend of mine who was an OBGYN. And so I wasn't ovulating even that way. So she suggested that I see infertility doctors. And so I went to go see them. And um, they unfortunately basically control your cycle, so to speak, and create a cycle. And so I have three children because of that. Um, then after I had twins 28 plus years ago, and I developed something called Sheehan syndrome. Uh, it was a very traumatic pregnancy uh, because they thought they had given me an epidural in the correct place and they hadn't. And so they gave me a bolus of medicine. A bolus means a whole lot of medicine to a patient at one time. And so they delivered one baby vaginally and one emergency C-section. So when mothers go through trauma while they're pregnant, it destroys their pituitary and they call that Sheehan syndrome. And Sheehan syndrome is basically your pituitary is not putting out the hormones. The pituitary is the master gland that puts out all the hormones for everything, thyroid, your ovaries, adrenals, et cetera. So fortunately I was able to get a pituitary uh, transplant and uh, I was successful uh, in you know, completely getting better with that. Um, then I developed um, scoliosis and that got gets worse as you age. So I went through um, 18 hours of back surgery four years ago, 14 hours in April. And I finished the surgery in July, four years ago in Germany. So uh, I've obviously gone through hormone problems because I'm 65 now. And so, you know, I've been through lots of things. And that's why I tell people, you don't know things by reading a book you know things by living them and reading a book and reading everything you know. And so my personal interest in cancer was like, okay, how do I not get cancer? So my whole life has been that. And fortunately, the energy uh, in the universe provided for the best mentors that I've had over the years. And now I want everyone to know what I know uh, because a lot of doctors, um, they haven't had an adverse event in their life or a very serious illness or a very serious injury. And so they don't really know how the patient feels. And then they go to a doctor and they, unfortunately, it's like a dead end or the doctor doesn't have any answers or they don't know what to do, or they give you this limited toolbox treatment protocol. And unfortunately, the beautiful miracle of our hundred trillion cells and are, it's just, magnanimous. And so we need to teach people as soon as they're born, like how to make your health your number one value, because we're trying to now trying to fi emergently fix people, but we can't do that. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. 
and our healthcare is in a beyond crisis right now. It's been in a crisis a long time, but now it's really come to a point of no return. And all you have to see is look at the span of illnesses. United States ranks 43rd in healthcare. We spend two and a half times more than any other. So you'd be better off really not seeing a doctor. I hate to say that. And I don't want to be so crass, but I also say like, we have these great doctors, they're brilliant, but we're not educating and in training these our patients to learn that self-care is really the new healthcare. Taking a drug or doing a surgery doesn't fix people, unfortunately. It may be necessary, but we also need to understand why, where, when, and how everything is happening. And autism is one in 36. Elementary kids, 60% have one or more chronic illnesses. Our teenagers have the highest rate of anxiety, depression, violence, and suicide. Our young people have cancer today. 18-year-olds, 20-year-olds, 25, 30-year-olds have stage, come to me with stage four cancer. I'm, and that's happened in probably the last 18 months. And then we have just, you know, cancer rates are one in two people. Um, heart disease is increasing. So, I mean, and we know more now than we've ever known. So why are we not preventing and precisely taking care of patients when we have all the information and knowledge to prevent and to really help patients not be sick people? And so we have, you know, you have a sick insurance system, not a health insurance system. And so people would not need the system if they all learned early on, you got to teach people early on, just like you teach them how to walk and you teach them how to love and you teach them how to swim and we teach people how to drive. But we got the highest priority is the human being. I tell all the patients, there's no human bodies for sale on Amazon. So you've got to take care of the human system that you have. So, um, you know, I want everyone to know, I know, Rachel, that you're trying to do your very best through through the largest organ in our body, the skin. And the skin is the, you know, inside of our body. Okay, I always tell people, your body grows from the inside out, not the outside in. So if you have a skin condition, it's an internal disruption. And so, and doctors give all these lotions and steroids and antibiotics, but they got to fix the insides. So the greatest wonderful organ that, that shields them every day is taken care of. Yes, absolutely. And I think another layer to this is, is simply a lot of people don't think that they're worth it, right? They get caught up in the rat race, working nine to five, especially women are working like a man. They're too much in their masculine. There's a lot of programming that's going on. I think making a lot of people feel that they're not worth it. However, the more we take the time to learn about how to care for ourselves, we're going to be leading by example. And we have a lot of listeners that have families and this is absolutely a very powerful episode. And I'm very honored to have you here to share your wisdom with us. And you mentioned one in two people in North America or, or worldwide that have, that have cancer. My sister had cancer. My mom had cancer. I have not. However, I take uh, excellent care of myself through things like biohacking and some things that I would love uh, I look forward to learning from with you today as well. So speaking of learning of ways that we can care for ourselves, what are practical ways we can support our own health and slowing aging journey? Right. Well, I think the most important thing is, first of all, we need to take a conscious inventory of how we are living and who we are and what our purpose is. So, cause a lot of people just are automatic. Everything is like, okay, I got to do this. I got to clean the kitchen. I got to take care of the kids. I got to do this, you know, instead of like, first of all, everything starts with you, who you are. And if you want to be a mother, the mother is, is basically controls the entire energetic environment of what's going on. So I know, cause I've had three kids. And then after I, I had my kids, I married a man with four girls and so it's very important that the parents are the models for the way things should be. And so you've got to learn first, take care of yourself first. That's why on the airplane, they say, put your gas mask on before you put somebody else's. So we've got to first take inventory. 
And first of all, I think the most important thing that I've learned in 37 years is setting your mind. Where is your mind? Where are your thoughts? I always, a patient came in the other day and she was saying, Dr. I remember the first visit you said to me, you know what you said to me? You said, your cells are listening to your thoughts each and every day. And so, and it's so true. And so I, and she said, she says she's never forgot it. And this is a woman who had stage four ovarian cancer, had surgery and chemo. And obviously it came back, but she is in checkmate with her cancer living. She still has some cancer, but she's 12 years out of having her diagnosis because what does she do? She has mastered her self-care and that includes your mind also. A lot of people don't think about their mental countenance, but I would say that's the first and foremost thing. So before I get out of bed every day, I set my mind and I have my affirmations memorized in my head. And I know that I say them. Usually I have so many of them that it's hard to get out of bed. I always go, okay, it's time to get out of bed. And so, and then use the opportunities in the day. If you're driving, if you're going to the restroom, or if you're doing a mindless act, think about all your affirmations, how grateful you are and turn a bad situation into an attitude of gratitude. And so, you know, first and foremost, you need to be thinking the universe, God, whatever works for you for perfect health, perfect healing, perfect harmony, her perfect homeostasis each and every day. And so, and then you, you know, go on, but you first have to have that first before you do externalities, because it first starts with your mental and physical and spiritual health. And so I would say that's the first thing. And it that takes practice. And you then you have to remember to do it. Okay. But once you learn, I tell people it takes, oh, probably eight weeks for things to be a habit. Like when you drove today, you didn't think about driving. You learned how to drive and you had a book and you took a test and then you drive and then you've driven so much that you know how to get from here to work or here to wherever you're going. And so you don't consciously drive. You drive because you inserted the program. We have to insert this program every day of that we love each other. You love each other that you can hug each other, hug yourself and kiss yourself and be thankful every day for the exciting day you're going to have and you're going to be excited about your healing potential no matter what the day brings you because you know we all have curveballs and detours in our life but we have to always be in a mental state of gratitude and because everything is a lesson and I tell my children I go if you don't listen to me the world will get your attention and so all these things are getting our attention and so then you never We'll make those mistakes again because you're, you know, something serious is getting your intention. So we should be saying, thank you for the lesson that I'm going to learn from this unfavorable experience. Because actually things all work up. I always say we fall upwards. And so we we don't really like we all learn from all of these experiences. And so I would say that's the first and foremost thing people have to do because all of us, they say now that from birth to seven years is probably the most impactful recordings, software programs that we have in our brain. And so we, and they're good and they're bad and they're not so good. Okay. So we have to look, we have to look at like a lot of patients don't feel worthy of being well. They don't love themselves if they deserve to be well. They're not worthy of it. They're not, you know, they're just, you know, they don't love themselves enough, but we should love ourselves enough that everything is possible. And so, um, so that's the first thing. Okay. Then, you know, I would say 50% of the population doesn't sleep. Okay. And so again, we have to be conscious that we have a circadian rhythm of 24 hours and we know we need to go to sleep from about 10 to six. It might be 9 30 to 6 30. You know, there's some variations because there's not every there's not a set rule for everybody. There's actually people who only need four hours sleep. I mean, I wish I was one of those, but I'm not. But you need to honor your circadian rhythm. 
And then so and, and make sure you sleep, turn it all out, stop using technology and the blue, stimulation of the blue light, don't have electricity in your bedroom. I mean, have the best sheets that you can possibly get organic sheets and make sure that everything is just perfect because that's a third of your life you're sleeping. So it needs to be beautiful. And then people, you know, aren't mindful of what they're eating. Everything they eat, everything you eat has an energetic value. Look at it as like, um, you know, when, when you go to the grocery store and you scan the code, the QR code, just think that a, everything you eat has a QR code that's going to turn on the cell's energy. It's going to fuel your mitochondria and help your ATP make energy and make every single cell work. Don't look at yourself as just a human body with liver and heart and kidney and spleen and all that, but every cell's got to work for you. And your cells are constantly 24 seven trying to take care of you and trying to go protect you. And that's why it's so amazing when these people come in with stage four cancer and their PET scans come back with these amazing tumors and masses and everything, but they walked in and I'm like, how does this even happen that these people have tumors, everything, and they can walk in here because your body's trying to save you and take care of you. But we have to be the conductor of that cell. We have to be the conductor on a mental, mental level and a physical level. So we've got to eat the food that has the energy to fuel you. So macaroni and cheese and Oreos are not going to take care of your cells. They're not going to give you the energy that you need to take care of each and every cell. And so you need to make sure it's good to know the farmer, go to farmer's market, go to, you know, places where you know the person who is cultivating what you're going to be putting in your, your body. You have to look at your body and, and be the best steward of the system that you've been giving and that your body and mind and spirit is a gift that you've been privileged to be to live in and be blessed with. It is not something casual. It's not something to be disregarded and disrespected. It's something to steward and be just absolutely utmostly grateful for. And then we have to move. We have 800 muscles and everybody sits. They're sitting on their phone, their iPad, their car and everything. And they don't move their body every chance you get. So you have to enjoy washing clothes. Enjoy washing dishes. Enjoying the fact that you get to go another flight of stairs. And love all the movement that you get to do. Because I guarantee you, the patients that come in here in wheelchairs and can't stand up, they'd give anything to have their strength and muscles back. So be, be very, and one big thing people don't know about muscles is that muscles have acupuncture meridians that provide energy. Your muscles have this, it's called a piezoelectric effect on your body. So when you stimulate the muscle, energy, you produce energy. You move the muscle, you stimulate energy. So we need to realize that these are like battery packs on your body providing energy. And then we need to find the outside. Unfortunately, today, a lot of our outside, you know, our air pollution and you know, the EMFs are not good, okay? The pollution is probably at its highest rate. That's why everyone has to do some kind of purification every day because everything that you eat and drink and breathe is really relatively, unfortunately, tainted with, I call it the great poisoning. And so we have to um, be mindful of that, but we do need to get outside and take in nature. You know, actually forest bathing is a treatment, believe it or not. Like being around trees and leaves and grass and all that is actually a treatment. So, um, and then one of the things like the simple thing, you know, people used to do it a long time ago, but they used to take baths, you know, and baths like in Europe, you know, in Germany, Baths are a very important part of a treatment. They have those healing baths. So you can create your own healing bath at home. And so before you go to bed, to ensure a good night's sleep, some Epsom salts and baking soda and essential oils and clay, because clay is what nature uses to clean their body. And because your skin is your largest organ, it's something that you can utilize on a regular basis to purify yourself. And since, like I talked about, the toxicity is so bad, but the, it's an amazing tool and it's relaxing. So you can do meditation, get essential oils, do the Epsom salts, baking soda and clay. I mean, you can get a lot done in a very, very short period of time. And you can do that and you can do that with your children. Because one thing children need today 
is calmness and quietness. And they all should be taught how to meditate. Get on the floor, put on the best YouTube of whatever app you want to use. If it's in it's Insight Timer or Calm or whatever, even if you have their attention for two minutes, five minutes, whatever, because you know, two-year-olds are running around all the time. But if you just say, we're going to do this for two minutes, five minutes, whatever it is, it's one of the best things that you can do because everybody needs to learn the art of nothingness, of just mm. quietness and peacefulness and serenity. And because we have so much, so much intensity every day and everyone needs to learn how to stop, take deep breathing exercises with the meditation. So these are all things that you can do that do, do not cost any money. All right. Your food costs money, but there's one thing you do not want to shortcut on, and that is the quality of your food. Beautifully stated. I love listening to you. I could listen to you all day, every day, sharing your wisdom. It's very clear to me that you are excited to get out of bed every morning. And I would attribute that to the fact that you are living your purpose. I look at you, you look like an angel, you look like a, a beautiful light worker that's just, you know, quite simply here to help other humans be healthier and happier and help elevate uh, our health, wellness and consciousness at the same time. And so it's, it's truly inspiring to see you working and supporting your clients internationally on helping them feel and look their best. And we talked about sheets. Yes, I talk about, uh, you know, sil sleeping in silver threaded blankets. I'm a huge fan of air, water, lighting, electromagnetic purification, and different detoxing strategies. And I would love to go to our next question here, which is on the back of your book, Be Perfectly Healthy. Why are we so sick? I know you touched on this and the huge psychological component, which is massive. We're seeing, uh, you know, I look around and you look at people speak and their eyes are darting everywhere. It's the, their brains are completely scrambled. But really, in your opinion, why are we so sick? Wow, that's a loaded question. But um, I every day, I, when, especially on the weekends, I walk on the ocean and I always say, gosh, here we are, all these humans, very few of them look well. And because when you're a doctor, you know, all you see is humans and you look at, you know, because you're, you're, you were taught, at least when I went to medical school, you were taught how to look at a body. And then, of course, in my training, I've learned from all other people how to look at the body and what this means and what that means and so forth and so on. And so, but you look around and you go, wow, how can, you know, people used to have like these, you know, beautiful skin and beautiful eyes and nice skin color. And, and you're like, you look at a child who's eight years old and they have already dark eyes under there. They're already overweight and they, you know, don't, they're not full of light. Okay. And so, but I think the biggest, well, there's so many things, but I did touch upon it. But the first thing I think is, uh, you know, I talked about the great poisoning. OK, because why are we so sick? OK, first of all, the food we eat, you know, food has been bastardized for probably 80 to 100 years. You know, if you ate what we ate like 100 years ago, you know, people were hunters and gatherers and they they grew their own food and they, you know, they went hunting to get their their animals. And, you know, if they had a failing liver, they ate liver and they ate organs to replenish, you know, their vitality. And then they ate, you know, meat and protein and they ate all the dairy raw and nothing was processed. Well, now everything is processed. In fact, now they're allowing Lunchables to be in the LA Unified School District. Well, we're just feeding, we want our kids to be vital and smart and athletic and everything, but we're feeding them Lunchables. I mean, I'm just like, and the chemicals that are abounding in everything that we buy. I bought a bottle of aspirin and one of my staff did. I said, buy non-toxic, no dye, no gluten, no sugar aspirin. And when I got it, I go, I can't take this. There's 13 chemicals that they have put in 
this dye-free aspirin. So I'm like, but why do they need to do this? This is ridiculous. And so, I mean, the chemicals, you wouldn't even believe that they're in there. I mean, stuff they use to make sculptured nails. I'm like, you've got to be kidding. And you're putting that in your body. I mean, that's like, that's just ridiculous. So because everything is tainted. So we need to buy things that like, it's a real apple. It's real zucchini. It's real fruit. It's real broccoli. It's real, you know, it's just one ingredient. Okay. And you don't have to be a chemist to read the label. I happen to know chemistry so I can read labels very well. And then now you can look up anything. But um, people just don't eat right. I look how people feed their kids, you know, and now they have kids meals and the kids meals, they're not healthy meals for the most part. I'm not saying every place, but I would say the predominant amount of restaurants don't serve, you know, healthy food to children. But I know as a mother, I made, you know, all my own children's baby food. I never used a jar of baby food. I nursed my kids and then I fed my kids raw milk and then I made my their own food and I didn't buy school lunches because as a child, I wasn't allowed to buy school lunches. My mother was really strict about that. She was going to be in charge of our food. So I raised my kids the same way. I'm not saying we never went out. Of course we went out. When I picked them up on school on a Monday afternoon, I'd say, okay, we're going to go get a treat. But also I let my kids play outside for three hours because the kids need to play outside. They were in school all day, so they need to play and be free and be free spirits. And so, um, but our, you know, look at the, look what's in the water. The water is pharma water and it's metal water and it's chemical water and it's parasites in the water and it's bugs in the water. And I mean, if you go to, uh, there's a website you can go to to see what's in your water in your city. And it says carcinogenic, 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 like arsenic, cadmium, merc. I mean, it goes on and on. And then now, because so many people, there's 10 or 12 prescriptions written per man, woman, and child. All those are in the water now because they go, go out through the water system. And so they're in the water unless you have a purification system, which you have to have. I don't care even if you buy the most expen inexpensive purification system, you must have a purification system and you can't be buying plastic. You can't be buying plastic water bottles because probably the number one pollutant of man is plastic. See, I grew up on wax paper and paper bags and that's what I still personally use. I don't use Ziploc bags and plastic. I have glass containers. I, ha I don't have anything with plastic because it's like so bad, not just for you, but the environment because that stuff isn't biodegradable. But if you look at everything, like the soap you use and you look at your shower water, like I have a whole house filtration system. And so the water is not going because, you know, you absorb everything through your skin. And so then you look at the shampoo you buy and then you look at the dishwashing you buy, everything. So you have to pay attention to every single thing that you use, create a non-toxic kitchen and everything because your personal environment, that's an area you can control. You can't control when you go out to other places. And then I think one of the biggest poisons we have today and people want to denounce us all the time is electromagnetic fields. And electromagnetic fields have gotten exponentially worse, I would say, in the last really five years, okay? But they were bad probably, I mean, you know, phone came out 30 plus years ago, but now with the iPads and the computers and the satellites and then towers and there's towers every single place and all of those are energy and people don't understand that we are all bioenergetic beings. We are an electrical system. That's how our nervous system works. That's how our brain works. That's how everything is working in our body. And so what you're doing is you have this toxic energy, even though people say, oh no, that's all hogwash. No, it's not hogwash. Listen to the Nobel Prize winners that talk about energy and people who talk about radio frequency, people who are worldwide experts on these energies. These are not good. I know I've taken... I took a picture of a patient's uh, a thermogram of a patient's face and brain uh, when they use cell phone. Before they used it, one minute, five minute, an hour, four hours later, your brain is inflamed. Now, you wonder why we have so many brain tumors? Okay, we never saw brain tumors before. Well, now we have, I have two young, very young people, one 35 years old, one 39. One has glioblastoma, which is the worst 
uh, cancer probably you could get. And the other one is an astrocytoma. And he worked, what did he work in? He was a CT tech. So what I'm saying is energy is very, very potentially harmful. And how everyone responds is unique. We're all, we're all different. We're all an N of one. They want to do clinical studies. Well, when you do clinical studies, they give each patient a drug, okay? Well, probably 50% of people have a placebo effect, all right? Placebo is, I think it worked. And then people can have the nocebo effect, which is, I don't think it's going to work, right? But we people, um, all, we're not all the same. So I always tell people, every individual is an original and how it affects one person is going to affect another one different. That's why you have, you can't, we put everybody label, label hypertension, diabetes, cancer, whatever they have. But we should, our job as a physician is to unravel those diseases that you are just now doing human optimization. That's with what we know, that's what should be happening is human optimization and getting better. I should make you better from the first time that you came in to see me. And I know because that's what we do here. And so um, th this electromagnetic fields, I want to go back to that because no one knows exactly the danger. Uh, I love the book Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Furstenberg. So his desire is to get rid of cell phones, which I love people who have such this beautiful passion. Trust me, I love my cell phone because I it's a tool for me, okay? I don't wear my cell phone, but it's a tool of technology for me to for all different things, okay? And so, but we have to use it properly and not excessively and not wear it on our body and use it in the proper way all the time. And people don't understand that the absolute thing that we do know is that electromagnetic fields cause a flux of calcium into our body. They call it the calcium channel pump. And so we know that it does the disturbs the beautiful physiology of our system. So when you add up the pollution, the food, the water, the chemicals in the food and all the, the dyes they use, like Skittles, for example, I mean, why are we selling Skittles with all these dyes? Do you know in many countries, they don't need them and allow Skittles because of the chemicals in it. And so like, why are we allowing people, young babies, children to ingest things that we know are toxic? Why? Okay, this is this is just ridiculous. I don't even understand it, okay? Because if you want to indulge on something, indulge on a homemade oatmeal chocolate chip cookie that's made healthily or really good non-toxic ice cream, which is amazing. So you can enjoy something really wonderful without it being intoxicated with so much chemicals and sugar, et cetera. I mean, when I made my kids, I made, you know, a banana walnut bread, but I made it with a glow glycemic index because it had protein and the right amount of fat and the right amount of oil and so forth. And so everything I, you know, made them was like that. So you can do that. And people, you know, the amount of information out there, oh my gosh, it's all free now. I mean, I grew up on Britannica, but what's available to the average person on your little cell phone? You should be a Navy SEAL and a genius all at the same time. And so, and all children, because children are just like little, they're like little geniuses all the time. And we are squashing that. We're just destroying it because once you give a kid an iPad or a cell phone, you immediately have stripped them of their creativity and, and them seeing the magic of life. And so I'm very against, I didn't let my kids have any kind of uh, technology until they were um, going to take driver's ed. And so, and then I didn't let my kids to play video games. I know people have a whole theory that video games can help with concentration and so forth and so on. I personally didn't allow it. Uh, there was too many other things to fill your day with. If you want to learn video games after you've matriculated through a very serious time of life when you're 21 years of age and you've already mastered the education series and, and done really well, you know what? You can do those fun things, but let's do the things that you absolutely need to live and survive and thrive. And I was listening to the news last night. They're saying that we have the lowest uh rates of, you know, education. Now the kids have lower 
uh, uh, grades than ever before. And it's like, what? How can this be? And why aren't we emergently trying to change the system? So if, every, if the medical profession sees that illness is at an all-time high and every MRI center and every pet can center is busy and every blood center is busy because I hear they're running out of tubes for this and that and patients can't get a PET scan for a month. Why aren't we raising this emergency awareness to change the trajectory of healthcare? Why? I think a lot of people simply don't know just how bad it is, which is why I referenced the 2019 to 2020 statistic a Canadian stat in my paper I just wrote, which yes, covers electromagnetics extensively also, that death of unknown cause is doubled. And so we're seeing the signals in the statistic. It's just the general population, I think, doesn't know how to actually find those statistics. So this is an open source paper to help create an awareness. So now that we know that all these things are making us ill, and leading to skin issues, leading to accelerated aging. Let's conclude this incredibly insightful episode on what are some of your favorite biohacking practices for yourself and your patients, some of the technologies that I see on your website that you like to encourage the use of, because there's so much we can do. So yes, we now, for those of you listening, you have an awareness you know, the world is out to get us. It's out to make us sick. It's out to, you know, essentially make money on that. That's, that's, I mean, what else could be the why, right? <laughs> I mean, we just have to say the elephant right. in the room. And no, this isn't medical advice. This is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. Well, we have the fabulous Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally here to break it all down for us. So how can we shift this somewhat negative world and provide more balance in our lives with ourselves, with our families, because we live in a binary world. We live in a world of duality. For every bad thing, there's also a good thing. So what are some of your favorite strategies for slowing aging and biohacking that you like to do for yourself, patients, and some of your favorite resources? I mentioned to you before, what, one thing that I see and I find that I find myself repeating regularly with patients is getting your mind in order, okay? And like I said, uh, I had a patient today who comes to see me. He's 67 years old and he has prostate cancer and I've told him to do the emotional work and he hasn't done it yet. So I said, okay, I'm going to present it another way because we require all of our patients to do emotional work, every single one of them, because there's no one had a perfect childhood, our perfect journey in their life. And they all have unresolved emotional conflict for the most part. Okay. I don't think anyone comes out perfect. And so, because if you're, if you have a frantic, crazy, restless, self-sabotaging mind, how are you going to feel good, right? So if you want your cells to work for you, you've got to do that. So I can't emphasize that enough. So, and if whatever it takes, if you need to listen to Bruce Lipton or Thich Nhat Hanh, there's so many great people out there, medicine, meditation apps to help you get you there, get partnered with someone who can see your divinity, which is your ability of your human self to be limitless, okay? And so uh, I would say that's the first and foremost, okay? Because then you wake up every day and you're so, so excited to live life. And just excitement is energy, correct? So because like, think about when you fall in love, what everyone knows that energy, correct? So you've got to, you know, first do that. So I personally always, I wake up and, you know, I always said I always do that affirmations before I get up. And then the, in the morning I drink, uh, I always have a fresh green juice. And so, and then I always put vitamin C in it and I put silica because silica is good for your hair, skin, nails, and bones and neutralizes aluminum. And then I do um, a fulvic minerals and algae. It's a, cause it's got multivitamin and the minerals in it. So I do that. And then I take you know, all these other, I, I take my hormones. I'm, you know, I need hormones or hormones are the natural drugs to your body. Everybody needs hormones. Usually probably from the time you're in your twenties, you probably start having hormonal, especially with all the xeno estrogens and all the endocrine disruptors that we have in the environment today. Endocrine disruptors are chemicals that cause 
hormonal imbalances. And I don't want to say everyone has that because there's no such thing as everyone or absolute or anything. But what I do see is that that is more prevalent. Okay. I would say most of the young men that I see that are 25 and 30 years old, they already have low testosterone. So that's not going to be good for their trajectory of their life on many, many levels because testosterone is a hormone that dominates the person. But anyway, so you want to get your hormones. So I take that. I take pancreatic enzymes. I take fiber twice a day. I take D3 and I take K2. I take uh, nutrients from my mitochondria, which are your powerhouse engines of your cell. And then I go work out. So I go work out, come back, take a shower. I drink a one cup of organic coffee a day with real cream. And I make my breakfast, which is two organic eggs cooked in butter. And then I'm usually off to the races with work. So, um, but at, at, luckily I work in medical Disneyland. And so medical Disneyland here is like, okay, you can do a red light bed. We have biocharger. You go in this room and it's amazing. And this device is putting out all these different frequencies. I have something called the biomodulator, which is basically a device to charge yourself literally every day, your cells every day. I learned uh, about it by a doctor, one of my friends, who had a very, very serious medical condition. He was an ophthalmologist, got a virus in his eye, and he was sick for five years. And he figured out that every cell in your body has to have voltage, okay? So if you don't have voltage, which is energy, just like a battery, your body can't take care of you. So I personally do that every single day. And then I have at home and in the office, I have infrared sauna. If I don't do infrared sauna and I just want to relax, I can relax in the sauna. I also do the bath that I just talked about. And then I um, have like a device called Equiscope. So before I did the podcast, I did an echoscope for my whole neck and back uh, because I had 18 hours of back surgery. I feel like I have to nourish and strengthen that part of my body. I do whole body laser on, on my body. Um, luckily, I, I work with a gentleman that's close to, um, you know, in my area in Orange County who has the most amazing lasers. And I literally like tell people laser is light. And so light provides energy to all your cells. So I do all kinds of wavelengths of light. Um, occasionally I do IVs. I don't have a lot of time to do IVs. I do peptides. I do several different peptides. Right now I'm doing a very, very advanced biohacking peptide that were customized to me. And it's a company that's brand new. So I was kind of one of their prototype. And so I, I do that injection Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I use a peptide called BPC-157 um, that I use almost every day. I take placenta in an injection once a week. Um, and then uh, I regularly exercise like four or five days a week on a regular basis. I try to get sunlight also on a regular basis. Um, I eat very good. Like at lunch, I, I usually have like cottage cheese with wheat germ on it and blueberry something because I got to go work in the afternoon. So I want my brain. I don't want to eat anything real heavy, uh, you know, if I'm going to go see patients in the afternoon. When I get home, I, my husband wonderfully, loving, lovingly cooks dinner. So he knows we go to the grocery store together. We buy everything. We try to prepare things so things are ready. Um, and then I always do deep breathing exercises at night to calm my entire nervous system to get myself in parasympathetic mode. And so I do a lot of little things. <laughs> so I get massage once a week also. So um, I do PMF sometimes also, post electromagnetic field. I kind of change it up, but I'm constantly doing things. My favorite thing is to take care of myself. Okay. That's my favorite thing. My children are all grown. I have three grandkids, but my favorite thing is I, I tell people, you got to take care of yourself before you want to give to others. And also if I'm going to tell a patient to do something, I should have done it by my, on myself times 10. So anyway, so I, I do like it. I'm, I'm not a person that I have to go get entertained. I have plenty of beautiful conversations with my patients. And so I don't need movies and TV or anything to entertain me because 
the patients have the most beautiful stories that anyone would want to have the privilege of listening to. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing some of your personal routines. And for those of you who've listened to the show for quite some time, you'll pick up on some things that I also do that Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally does also. So I'm on the right track, right? I'm setting myself up for success. And all of you listening here are just getting some excellent downloads and upgrades that you can start to employ in your personal life to support yourself and your families. And absolutely, when we care for ourselves, we raise ourselves up, our consciousness up, our psychological selves up as well. We're less scrambled, we're more focused, we're more clear, we're more concise, we're going to have better communication, and we're going to navigate through our life with greater ease and beauty. And at the end of the day, when we prevent things like cancer, when we reduce our exposure to environmental toxins, when we reduce our exposure to toxins in our personal care products in the kitchen and also in the restroom, and focus on purification of our air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, and detox those pathogens that also tend to contribute to cancers as well, like yeast, fungi, mold, parasites, all these things, you're going to have the best skin of your life. And if your skin is off, it's telling you that something is awry and to pay attention to it. Dr. Lee Aaron Connolly, it's been a pleasure having you here on the show. Do you have any closing words for us here today? And where can everyone learn more about you? Your link to your book is in the description of this episode. First of all, never give up on yourself or anyone else. Never stop. Be unstoppable. And then Keneally MD is the Instagram. And then Keneally MD shows everything else. And we have a cancer conversation every other Tuesday. I'll be featuring Dr. Tennant this next Tuesday at five o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so you will learn a voluminous amounts of information at the Cancer Conversations. Beautiful. And learn more about Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally at KeneallyMD.com. Absolutely. Follow her on social media. Your Instagram account is the most inspiring account that I follow hands down, seeing you exercise, seeing you share your, your workouts, what you're eating, what you and your staff are eating. You know, the, these are really the types of providers that we all want to be seeing and spending time and money with those that are living by example, because they're taking the best care of themselves, which then essentially results in them taking the best care of you also. So always look at your practitioner and what they do behind the scenes. And you truly are leading by example in your community, in the health entrepreneur space, which is how I first started to hear about your work. You're, you're truly an inspiration to me. I can't emphasize that enough. And thank you so much for joining us here on the Always Radiant Skin podcast. If you have any questions from the show, the ways to reach out to Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally and myself are in the description of the show. I wish you a beautiful rest of your day with yourself and your family. We went a little bit over it with time. It's 444, of course it is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, many blessings to you, your loved ones, and the beautiful, unique care that you provide to your patients, which is, is changing lives. And you're incorporating all these incredible different types of technologies as well. So, so incredibly thrilled to see healers like yourself that are truly making a difference and are passionate. Thank you for being on the show. You're welcome. <laughs>